Well, this week we have seen a government that has descended into a rabble without a cause. The Prime Minister is leaving Australia's future in the hands of a man who can't even see as far as the end of a sentence. And we saw that today in question time. A government where cabinet ministers openly dissociate themselves from their own government, including the Deputy Prime Minister. A mob that behaved like an opposition in exile on the government benches, led by a man of no conviction who has become a caricature of himself. A Prime Minister who is all smirk and mirrors, no substance. A Prime Minister incapable of dealing with the present, let alone taking Australia into the future. Now, after a decade of ridiculing climate action, they've been mugged by reality and dragged towards net zero by 2050. It's a familiar pattern. One, you deny a problem exists. Two, you wait until it becomes a crisis. Three, you blame someone else for the inaction. Four, when you do act, it's always too little and too late. And five, that when you do that, you pretend you've been there all along and hope no one notices. <laughs> On bushfires, we saw it. I don't hold a hose, mate. And then, when he decided to be hands-on, literally by forcing vulnerable people to shake his hand, he said oh, I was there the whole way along. Oh, yeah. On the pandemic, JobKeeper was a dangerous idea that he opposed. Vaccines was not a race, not a race. We were first in the queue when we were right at the back. And of course, as a result, we have the Prime Minister's lockdowns, which we're coming out of now, where he tries to take credit for us coming out of the lockdowns, which are a direct creation of a failure on vaccine supply yep. and on purpose-built quarantine. Yeah. Now we're at climate, the latest in this pattern. Banal comments from those opposite and denial. They say now technology is the answer. But what's their position on technology? One, they did create some funds, like the Emissions Reduction Fund. Where does the money come from for those funds? It comes from taxes, from taxes. And yet they hope no one notices that. They say it's about technology. And, let, and yet the Prime Minister, of course, said that electric vehicles would end the weekend. Would end the weekend. That you wouldn't be able to drive your SUV. You wouldn't be able to tow your trailer. All this absolute nonsense when we see where the world is going on those issues. And at a time where previously before they adopted that, you had the Treasurer writing op-eds supporting electric vehicles. On batteries to store renewables, the Prime Minister likened the biggest battery in Australia to being as significant as the big banana or the big prawn. Just dismissed all of it. And on renewable energy targets, he said it's nuts and it's a muppet of a proposal, the idea of having renewable energy targets. Well, remember when he became Prime Minister, he said it was a government of Muppets. Well, he got that right then and he's right now that this is a government of Muppets. Because the fact is, in spite of all of that, they take people as mugs. They're funding the proponents of a coal-fired power station in Queensland that they promised that the last election would happen. They know it's not going to go ahead, but they're using taxpayers' funds regardless. This is a government that is scared of the present but terrified of the future and incapable, incapable of shaping the future to take advantage of the opportunities which are there. Labor wants to seize that opportunity. Labor wants to make sure that Australians can benefit from those opportunities. That's why, in my first budget reply, we advanced the rewiring the nation policy. 
a $20 billion plan to build transmission into the 21st century so that renewables can go into the grid. This mob, through Malcolm Turnbull, uh, have got a good proposal that has gone ahead. Snowy 2.0. But guess what? It doesn't fit into the grid. It's it. going to be open. They haven't plugged it in so that you can use the energy for the grid. It is just extraordinary. Rewiring the nation will do just that. We want cheaper electric vehicles. We're not going to tell people what to drive. We're going to drive down the price, though, to make it competitive, yeah. to make sure that we're not the dumping ground for what the rest of the world doesn't want. Yeah. And that's why you need to deal with these issues. We want community batteries so that it's not just about putting solar panels on roofs, it's about making sure that that energy can be stored. It's an efficiency measure. We want to make sure that Australians can take advantage of the jobs through new energy apprenticeships. Action on climate change is just one element of our plan of a better life for working families, secure Australian jobs and a future made in Australia. An economy that works for people, building back better from the pandemic through our National Reconstruction Fund, supporting existing industries but new industries, a future made in Australia, manufacturing here. This Deputy Prime Minister spoke about, oh, I can't see jobs with renewables. It's about driving down energy prices that then enable you to manufacture goods and give you a competitive advantage. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not about just the jobs in terms of maintenance of the wind farms or building the solar panels. It's about the whole economy and driving costs down. Yeah. We want a future made in Australia. We want a Buy Australian plan. And we want people who work in those industries to have secure work. They want temporary labour to be imported. We want to train Australians so that we lift wages, don't drive them down. Yeah. We want to deal with casualisation of the workforce. We want to look after gig workers. We want same jobs, same pay. Yeah. We want to close the gender pay gap. We want to make wage theft a crime. We want to skill up Australians through Jobs and Skills Australia. We have a plan for working lives. We have a plan for cheaper childcare. We have a plan to look after Australians from their first years through to their later years by looking after aged care. We want equality for women. This mob set up inquiries to find out what their own office knew about things that happened in Parliament House. They can't be taken seriously. All those opposite have is fear. And this week we've seen the remarkable attempt by the Prime Minister to say net zero by 2050 under them is good, but net zero by 2050 under us is somehow not good. It's just extraordinary. Labor offers hope for a better future and we have a plan to achieve it. A plan for economy, for an economy that works for people. A plan for people's working lives that gives them opportunity. A plan where no one is left behind and no one held back. A plan where Medicare is at the centre of our health system. A plan to offer hope for a better future, to shape change, which is inevitable change. You can either fear it or shape it in the interests of people. We want to do that. We can be a renewable energy superpower for the world. We're located in the fastest growing region of the world in human history. That presents us with an extraordinary opportunity to advance. It's consistent Labor's plan with what Labor always does. Look after people. Bring people with us on that, on that journey. Labor has always seen the light on the hill as being critical. This Prime Minister is the gaslight on the hill. <laughs> Someone who's not prepared, not prepared for the present, let alone capable of leading us into the future. Led by a government whereby, when he leaves, when he leaves and goes to Glasgow, the deputy will be in charge of the country. <laughs> the deputy. It is embarrassing. A government, a government that are incapable of the leadership 
that Australia needs, and that's why this Prime Members. Minister always follows, never leaves. Time yeah. has expired.